Hello and happy Sunday. I'm Pastor Joy, I'm one of the pastors at Glencliff UMC, and I have the privilege of facilitating our Sunday gathering this morning. So I will also be sharing announcements, prayer concerns, and uh, highlights from our Sunday school with you this afternoon. So first, I would like to welcome us into the space together and with the Spirit of God, being always appreciative that in God's being and presence, they do not simply invite us to exist, but to come into them, to be part with them, to become more fully of who we are created to be because of them and to do that together, that we are the body of Christ in our gathering and in our living faithfully with one another. And so we light our candle in appreciation both for this gift and also in our gathering and together and God's love being grace and presence. So first up announcements, we have some very cool things happening uh, with, through, and around the village. First, uh, beginning in May, we are going to be doing first Sunday in-person worship. So please hear my words. First Sundays will be in-person worship at Glencliff UMC at 11 a.m. The remaining Sundays in the month will be our online Sunday uh, morning gathering at 9 a.m. on Zoom. So that will start the first Sunday in May that we'll be gathering and we're going to try this through the summer to start our back in person experience and process and then the rest of the month um, through the summer uh, Sundays 2 through 4, 2 through 5 depending on how many are in each month will be on Zoom at 9 a.m. Watch for more details. We'll make sure to have additional information and keep reminding folks. Also, the Haven, our community garden that is in alignment with uh, the village at Glencoeff UMC is rolling forward. They will be out soon putting in the raised plant beds and the development process has been really wonderful. Most of the holdups have just been weather on the days that folks were supposed to gather and make work happen, but we are looking forward to beginning to see manifest the amazing and beautiful work that has been facilitated uh, by our student pastor intern, Will, and an amazing team of community folks. Jacob Graham is graduating on May 8th and we are excited for him and so sending him blessings in advance and we'll continue um, to celebrate his graduation in coming weeks as he is preparing uh, to become a UMC pastor. So congratulations Jacob. And we have one birthday this week, Miss Margaret. Blessed child of God, her birthday is this Tuesday, April 12th. Please do reach out and wish her a happy birthday if you have an opportunity, and thank you for that. In terms of prayer concerns, we want to lift up the following with God and in God. Gary, who is having heart surgery this Tuesday, is actually uh, being admitted into the hospital today in preparation. For all those who were affected by the flood, um, many folks are still, of course, having lasting experiences and impacts and such a different experience for every person who was impacted. So please continue to pray and be mindful of how we can be loving support with and for one another. For the village, um, blessings and thankfulness for how it's going forward and also the way it has been changing and transforming the hearts of folks in the community who are concerned about and even afraid of it being here. And I want to be clear that we are not changing and transforming folks, but it is the faithfulness of this congregation and believing that this is the work, this is the ministry, this is the way of being in community that God is calling us to and that our faithfulness and steadfastness with that 
despite folks' concerns and fears. That has what's been transformative with the Holy Spirit. And so we're, we're prayerful for the continual development and opening of the village and also for our continual faithfulness and discernment. We want to say prayers for Miss Carmen, for Tanya and Car sorry, Tanya and Connor, and also for Richard. Please feel free to offer up any prayers of celebration or um, requests and supplication that we have for ourselves and one another. Loving and gracious God, we thank you so deeply and so dearly for your presence with us that we are never alone, not only because we have, you have given us one another, but because you have given us you. And despite how difficult circumstances may be, whew, as hard as they may be, some of us several a couple weeks ago and even in reminders from 2010 had to wade in some waters, some literal waters, and there, there are those of us who are wading in emotional and psychological waters and physical waters um, on a regular basis. And so we are prayerful to receive and thankful for your comfort and that your comfort is not a matter of our not facing struggle because that's not genuine to life. That's not, that's not life at all. But that your comfort is the awareness that you will help us see and faithfully live our way through whatever is happening. We are prayerful for those who are in need of healing, those who are in need of support, and for those who are in need of loving and strengthening just in our hearts and in our minds and in our beings. Bless us always to be the hearts, the hands, and the feet that you have created and called us to be, because while we are so thankful for your imminent presence, we also want to be the presence that we ask of you with and for one another as you ask that of us. We thank you, we praise you, we love you. Never more than you love us and we love you, God, so much. And they were holy and precious son, Jesus. And together we say, amen. Our Sunday School topic for this morning is on unity, and we want to frame before we get into the overview that the United Methodist Church social principles specifically affirm that when we say unity, we mean unity in diversity, not unity that's not unity. It's actually when we confuse assimilation <laughs> with unity. Um, so I'll just go ahead and read this uh, couple sentences from our preamble of the United Methodist Church Social Principles, and the link should be in the Facebook page. It simply says, we affirm our unity in Jesus Christ while acknowledging differences and applying our faith in different cultural contexts as we live out the gospel. We stand united in declaring our faith that God's grace is available to all that nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. And so this is significant because it inherently pulls us away as a church, as a denomination we are naming, that when we say unity, we mean unity and diversity. We mean unity as God has created each and all of us to be as human beings. So I have joked, um, but not joking in um, some sessions that I facilitate that when I think about unity and diversity, when I think about what it means for us to be united, um, I think about 1 Corinthians 13 when Paul says we are many parts in one body. And so um, I was facilitating a session a few weeks ago and <laughs> didn't mean to get around to this because it was gross, but it's also very apropos. And I said, if we're the eye, we can't try to be the toe and we can't tell the toe to be an eye. 
and then realizing we really don't want to do that because that would get messy and gross real fast. And just it is it's this perfect example of why it matters that we recognize that God has created us in diversity to be together with one another because no one can do everything. No one can be purposed to do all things and no particular thing fulfills everything with the exception of God, God's self. Um, as created beings of God, we have each been uniquely purposed and uniquely gifted, but God is also saying we need one another to fulfill our whole, to fulfill our whole purpose, um, to fulfill our whole being as a community. And we need to then receive the diversity in which God has created us rather than trying to disappear difference which is assimilation. Everybody has to be the same thing. Um, everybody's back to being eye eyeballs when we also need toes and elbows and feet and so on and so forth. Um, so wanting to be clear that when we're talking about unity as the United Methodist Church, we're talking about unity and diversity. The unity in and even despite the unity and diversity and also unity despite our differences. So our passage for today was Psalm 133, and I'm going to read it because it's fairly short, and it says, How very good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. It is like the precious oil on the head running down upon the beard on the beard of Aaron, running down over the collar of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord ordained his, birth, ordained his blessing live forevermore. It's really beautiful. And I think such a beautiful description of when we live together in our unity, in our diversity, and in our difference, what we accomplish. So I'm just going to share the questions that we discussed in Sunday School this morning. Would love for you to reflect on them yourself. And feel free to share in the comments anything that resonates for you, that comes up for you that you would like to share. So the questions that we discussed in our session this morning were, um, when is a time in your life that you believe you've experienced holy unity? What, if you were a child, if it's your family, what is an event or an experience that you have where you experience holy unity? That's question one. Question number two is what did it feel like? And we always ask people what something feels like for us because we often look at what things look like and two people can be doing the same action but done with different spirits has very different impact and different results. So what did it feel like that you had a sense that this was unity, which goes into question three, what did we do, what were we doing together and how were we doing it? that we believe that that was unity. And the final question that we uh, discussed together, how can we create those experiences, those senses um, of unity, those relational dynamics of unity in our spaces and in the ways that we are together? So some of the reflections that we received back out uh, just to share briefly is um, that in terms of what we do together, realizing that unity does require common vision. So even when we are diverse and different, we do have to have a common purpose, um, a common vision, a common hope that we are serving and living towards together, that that's, real, that's what makes us a community that we're even moving forward together. And in terms of how we recreate it, how we live it, how we manifest it through ourselves, that unity has to be intentional. And that that intentionality has to go beyond when we're comfortable, or um, actually not beyond when we're comfortable, it was specifically that we don't wanna wait until there's a crisis to be unified, that it's so beautiful, um, after the flood a couple weeks ago, after the tornado last year, the flood in 2010, seeing the ways that people came together to help one another is beautiful. And the kingdom of God 
is towards thriving. So if we only help one another in crisis, we're actually only helping with immediate, um, I don't even know if at that point we're at healing. Um, we're helping with immediate kind of cleanup and support, but we're never actually moving to the point of thriving. So the intentionality is also the focus that when things are comfortable, that's actually a space and time where we have the capacity to be intentional about continuing to build up and out and forward and closer with and stronger with one another. And so uh, those were the main takeaways and main points that folks have. We'll be really interested to hear your insights and your thoughts if you have any to share with us. And that was Sunday School today. Blessings to you. Sorry that we missed you with us. Or if you are finding this and it happens to be healing for your spirit and soul, so glad that you were able to experience this and participate with us in this way. We say blessings with one another, for one another, and in with God as we go forth in our days, living faithfully and powerfully in and of the love of God. Amen.